Hello everyone, I'm Payal from Makerschool. We're here again with our friends at Plein Image Look, which is a camera and light rental house in Paris. This time, we are going to talk about the depth of field. Ready? Let's ask Wikipedia. I'm feeling a bit lazy this morning. The depth of field is the distance between the nearest and the furthest objects that are in focus in an image. Is it clear? Yes? Thank you for watching. See you soon. Okay, I'm just kidding. Let's break it down. Suppose I want to compose a frame. My frame needs a main subject. Hello, Maeva. Naturally, I'll put my subject in focus using the focus ring on the lens. Now, in addition to my main subject, the lovely Maeva, there might be other objects in the foreground and in the background. Some of these other objects will also be in focus and some will be out of focus. Now, let's imagine a line through the depth of my composition between the first object which appears sharp in the foreground all the way back to the last sharp object in the background. The depth of field is the distance between these two points. Being a distance, this line could be short or long. In other words, a shallow depth of field versus a deep focus. Is that better? Yes, no, we could use some practice. But first, let me try and convince you that the depth of field is a very powerful aesthetic and storytelling tool that we can use to give direction to the viewer's eyes on the screen. A powerful tool to add second degree meaning or additional emotions to our composition. Here's an example, and a bit of a cliche if you don't mind. Imagine I'm setting up a shot for the last scene of a romantic comedy. Yes, I shamefully admit that I'm a recovering romantic. After a whole movie long search seeking the love of his life, Nathan finally finds her, Maeva, the goddess. Where is she? Well, she's at Plein Image Lock, working out with some heavy equipment, of course. In quite a dramatic manner, Nathan turns his head in slow motion and gives Maeva a look. The look. Problem is that Maeva is surrounded by a bunch of hairy, sweaty crew members. Emotionally, Nathan is focused on Maeva, but visually, the image is too polluted. And voila, this is a good opportunity to use a shallow depth of field to isolate Maeva in the crowded space. Do you think it works better? Here's another example. Maeva, the renowned filmmaker, is setting up a shot in the background. In the foreground, two of her actors are talking behind her back. Egomaniacal jerk! With a shallow depth of field, Maeva is too out of focus and is no longer a part of the scene. But with a greater depth of field or a deep focus, she has presence. Maybe when the actors talk about her, we see Maeva pause and turn her head ever so slightly. Did she hear them? Maybe. If in the next scene Maeva fires the actors, we'll know why. Do you agree? Now that we know how powerful the depth of field can be, let's see how we can control it. If you want to change the depth of field of your shot from shallow to deep focus and vice versa, you need to play around with three elements. Well, three and a half to be devilishly precise. Element number one, the aperture or the iris. For a shallow depth of field, say, for a portrait, open up the aperture f2.8, f2, or if your lens allows, you can choose f1.4, but not every lens can do that. For a deep focus, when shooting a landscape, for example, close down the aperture of your lens, f11, 16, or 22. For more on aperture, check our video on the exposure triangle. Element number two, 
shot value. For any given lens focal length, let's say a 25mm, you will have a more shallow depth of field if you place your subject closer to your camera, like a close-up shot. On the other hand, you will have a greater depth of field with the same lens if you place your maiva, sorry, your subject, further away to compose a wider shot value, like a medium wide shot. Element number three, the size of the camera sensor. A camera with a large sensor like a Sony Alpha 7 or an Arri Alexa Mini LF will have a very shallow depth of field, whereas another camera with a smaller sensor like a cell phone will produce images with a deep focus. Maybe that doesn't really count though, since camera sensors are not interchangeable, and I'm stuck with the camera I have. At least until my next birthday. Element number three and a half, focal length. If you don't change the distance between your camera and your subject and you use two different lens focal lengths, like a 25mm lens and a 50mm lens, you'll have a greater depth of field with the wider angled lens, the 25mm, and you'll have a shallower depth of field with your tighter angled lens, the 50mm. But then your shot values are no longer the same, so maybe this doesn't really count either because if you modify the distance between your subject and the camera to create the same shot value, the depth of field of the different lenses will be the same. How are you feeling? Dizzy? Me too. I talk too much. What we need is practice, perseverance and a cup of tea with a dear friend. It was lovely hanging out with you. Let us know if you found this video useful or if you want us to talk about another topic. Happy 2021, be safe, be kind.